that God has taken to great heights. As we praise and thank God, we have every reason to tell God, thank you for God for calling, for the wishing that you carried thus far. With that in mind, join with me to just say how great the Lord. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great the Lord, how great the Lord. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great. Senior pastor of Emmanuel Methodist Church, who is close to CM City, who always journeys with us to open this evening program with a word of prayer. Reverend James Raj. Let's pray. Lord our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for this evening. What a great joy and honor to be in your presence with people of God. And looking, Lord, unto you and turning our hearts towards you, Lord, at this evening with thanksgiving and praise. As we come to you, Lord, we are conscious of how great you are, how feeble we are in our nature, how awesome you are, Lord, how sinful we are. We thank you and praise you, Father. Lord, you know the purpose that we have gathered here Lord, to say thank you as we mentioned just now, Lord, for the awesome ministry of our dear Dr. Collins to the awesome God who called her, Lord, to accomplish your plan and purpose through her lives. We thank and praise you, Lord, for the vision that she had for the Christian Mission Charitable Trust. We thank and praise you for all the formation, the Christian formation that, Lord, it has been rendered to the society. We thank and praise you, O Father, for the guiding spirit of God that led her thus far, Lord, in our ministry as she celebrates her 85th birthday. Father, we pray that the Lord who is so faithful thus far will continue to remain faithful will continue to, Lord, guide her, O Master, will continue to guard her, and will continue to, Lord, accomplish your plan and purpose through her. We thank you for this godly institution. And we thank and praise you for all those who work there. Bless them. We especially pray for this evening, this very thanksgiving prayer. Lord, it's my prayer that as we celebrate the goodness and the faithfulness of God, give us grace to focus our eyes upon the one who called us, the one who created us, the one who governs us. Give us grace to turn our hearts towards the God who is God of holy, mighty. To that end, we give all glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. On behalf of CM City family, I'd like to thank you for the privilege that you could accept our invitation and may I request Mr. Ezekiel, the Director of Administration of CMCT to hand over a memento as a token of our love and affection. Mr. Ezekiel, Director of Administration. CMCT is known for love, gratitude and thanksgiving. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Mr. Ezekiel. Let me take this opportunity to welcome all our invitees, friends, well-wishers, prayer warriors to this evening Thanksgiving. In spite of busy schedule and traffic, I'm glad you have turned up on time. That's why you wanted to start on time. And anything that we do we, that takes the priority is worshipping God. 
the God who created for a purpose and there's a reason for our living in this world and I believe we are the visible witness for what God can do through in and through our life Dr. Colleen all these years and this evening is to say Lord we are here to worship you may I request Mr. Aaron director of programs and also Mr. Victor Samuel from development department to lead us in the time of worship Let us uh, sing a few songs and worship our God. Uh, let us all stand and sing, sing this song. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So love you the world that he gave us his son. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. God be the glory, great things he had done. So love be the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life at an on bed for sin. And opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He had done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the wildest of thunder who truly believes that moments from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he had done great things he has taught us great things he had done and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son but purer and higher and greater will be a wonder our transport when Jesus we see praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth hear his voice praise the Lord praise the Lord let the people rejoice who oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory Great things he had done. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he had done. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Mr. Aaron and Mr. Victor, for leading us in the time of worship, which if you ask somebody what is first things first, that's the first thing that we do. And that's what we have done, with heart filled with gratitude and thanksgiving. It's really a joy, especially to join with Mr. Philip, our CEO, and the directors of CMCT to welcome again all our invitees and guests. We have a welcome dance by the Bethany Higher School, Mugapir, Chennai, which has been started again with a vision by our dear Dr. Colin for the underprivileged children. If you ask me, many have grown up 
and positioned in the society as a citizens but the vision continues now they are going to bring a bharatanatyam for a song called uravu ondru kanden uravu ondru kanden the relationship that we have built over to the team from bethany high school for the dance
Thank you for that wonderful dance by the team from Bethany High School. I think no problem if you give them one more time that applause. You know, children grow with appreciation, so you know that. And they will remember this. On Dr. Collins' 85th birthday, we danced and everybody clapped. Thank you so much. There's a beautiful verse that we were also remembering this morning before we are going to see something connected with that. The word of God says, You whom I have upheld since you are conceived, even I have carried since your birth, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I'd like to see the journey of uh, Dr. Colin from birth till today, 85 years, God's faithfulness. Let's watch. And you will say, thank you, Lord. That's Dr. Colin read it. Journey of faith, journey of obedience, voice of calling from above. It's amazing. Dear Dr. Colin, all those who are gathered, even those who are watching from far and near, we want to greet you. All that they will have to say, we want to thank God for your life. Stepping out of the comfort zone for the people 
especially the underprivileged. And as we say, the journey continues and it will continue. And you are here to join us in the journey, connecting to your hearts, joining hands for the great job that CMC is doing. Now we have a couple of special invites to facilitate Dear Dr. Collins, especially those who journey with CMCT, those who know her very well. And we have Dr. Pradeep Philip, uh, IPS, who has been serving our country, especially at our states, in various places at various positions, and, and he has contributed to his leadership. And uh, he has won the Queen's Award, and a person behind that Friends of Police, which is popularly known all over. And also he has authored a couple of books, and uh, may I request Dr. Pradeep Philip to come over and give his felicitation to Dr. Colin. And as he comes on the stage, may I request Mr. Aaron, Director of Programs, to honor him with a memento on behalf of CMCT family for accepting our invitation. Thank you, Dr. Pradeep, for your time. In spite of all your commitments, you are here this evening. And it's a great privilege. Let's put our hands together and say. Thank you. One topic I've enjoyed that changed my life is beat it, be at it. Over to Dr. Pradeep. Dr. Colleen Babis read it, the heroine of the day, and not just the day, but of six decades of the history of this country and the city and the state. All the distinguished guests gathered to celebrate her 85th birthday and the success of the mission of CMCT. Dear friends and all the benefactors, beneficiaries, mission partners over the decades and those who are listening perhaps even online since every audience today has an online component. It's truly an awesome moment to celebrate the life and the contribution and impact of a great missionary. Dr. Colleen read it. She is an, a living Amy Carmichael. A few weeks ago, I went to Donavur to see the legacy left behind by that great missionary that came from another part of the world, Ireland. But here is one missionary who has left her beautiful country, one of the most beautiful country in the whole world, New Zealand. So what drove her to come to this country, leaving, as Brother Anbu said, her comfort zone? A missionary cannot be a missionary unless he or she is also a passionary. It is the passion for God that brought her thousands of kilometers away from her home in New Zealand, leaving behind her parents, her family, siblings, all her kit and kin, associations, friends, and everything she has grown up with at the tender age of my younger daughter. She's 24, and I can't even imagine her leaving us what a wrenching experience it would be. It is because of a love of God and a love of people that brought her this far. And we can see in the video how she started small with just meeting the needs of one or a few people. And then she learned about this country, a great country, a country that is spiritual. A country that believes in God. And at this time we must also acknowledge the work of all her predecessors. She belongs to a vanishing breed of missionaries 
from distant lands, distant countries. Today many would deny their role, but the languages, the linguistics, the dictionaries, the contribution to the transformation of health education per se, and also contribution even to agriculture, bringing new crops, new ways of agriculture, sowing the seeds of both the Green Revolution and the White Revolution in India. This is all the work of the missionaries who came to India over the last couple of centuries. And that created this kind of nationhood that came into being in 1947. So today, Dr. Colleen, we join the nation in thanking you for your services to the nation. You have not just served the city of Chennai or the underprivileged in Tamil Nadu, but you have served India, perhaps much more than we Indians have done. And we want to thank God for your life, for giving you long life and making you fruitful even at the age of 85 as written by the psalmist. It is said that if you carry the Bible when you are young, the Bible will carry you when you are old. And it is the word of God that is her source of strength, her source of joy as I have known over the years. So God bless Dr. Colleen Rarit. Let her live on and see a century and let CMCT expand even from the 4,000 beneficiaries that it now caters to over a year and with so many institutions, let it even further multiply. So once again, I thank the organizers for having given me this rare privilege of being present. You know, it is a moment that we should treasure that we were present when a great missionary is celebrating her 85th birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pradeep, for those words. That one word that I spoke to us one more time, the word passion, I think that's the secret of our life that's made all our staff sitting here from CMCT to work for CMCT with a passion. Now we have something, one of the projects that CMCT, and you will watch for a minute what this is all about. Bethany School, education affordable amount. Nearly 1,400 students plans to expand and accommodate more children in the days to come. The CMCT sponsorship program supports 1,646 children, ensuring access to education and essential provisions. It fosters holistic development through special activities and promotes a meaningful connection between children and sponsors. 1,400 students in Bethany School. 1,646 sponsored. Some of the students have gone to the manager in the banking industry. Some have become nurses, engineers. And your prayerful support is crucial for our mission to provide quality education to these children. You can connect in whatever possible ways. That's about the school education. Now, may I request the senior most officer of the government served in various capacities. Mr. Wilfred David R. IAS was served maybe starting from Aston collector, then collector, then secretary of health, sports, HR planning, strategy,
and presently he is an advisor for digital and simple governance for Tamil Nadu government. Busy person, but you, when you hear him, you will say, how is he connected with CMCT? May I request Mr. Wilfred David to come over and give the felicitation to Dr. Colin. As he comes on the stage, may I request Mr. Philip, our CEO of CMCT, to hand over a memento on behalf of CMCT family to thank him for the time taken in spite of all his busy coming. So good to see you, Colin. It's such a wonderful uh, thing that we are here celebrating your 85th birthday. Um, one of the earlier clips that you saw there, you would have seen Mana Farm, Padapai. And uh, that is uh, where I grew up. My parents lived there. And uh, they opened their uh, home for camps and one of the earliest um, people that we hosted was Colin and a full gang from every girls rally. That was what it was called then. And uh, I really want to say um, it was an amazing time to see Colin because uh, there was absolutely little or no comfort uh, we had only two bedrooms in that house and a small hall but uh, everybody was packed in and uh, girls were brought in I think from uh, in around, around Chetput and a whole lot of other areas and they came in there and uh, they received the word of God they received the blessings that God was passing on and Colin was uh, I, we found my parents you know we used to discuss uh, she never got discouraged because there were a lot of challenges. I think some of her team members are still here. But she just never got discouraged at all. She was um, um, so clear about her calling and so clear about the fact that God wanted her to do this at this season of time that uh, she bore everything in her stride. So today when we see how God has blessed that commitment and the zeal we know it is just the work of the Lord in her life and um, we know many many people have been blessed um, nowadays you know many people take for granted the good that somebody else does but there are many people who are grateful and I know that uh, many many people have been grateful for God's goodness in their lives through Colin and her team and it's also nice to know that you know, the legacy is passing on. It's on a generation to generation uh, spirit. So she's been also trying to pass on the administrative burden, the administrative roles into so many people and many of you are here. There are institutions which have been born, like the school that we just saw. Uh, some of the children we have been trying to help out also got admission into Bethany school. And uh, one of the boys is doing very well. He became a decathlon champion for the Madras University. And he is now a physical education teacher in a polytechnic. And so many other children who have been blessed because they studied at Bethany School. And um, also the uh, head office at uh, Spur Tank Road. is such a wonderful thing that God has used and a willing servant you know finally it is about our willingness to be used and I believe Colin was just willing to do what she had to do at a given point in time and God has blessed her so may God bless you Colin and uh, we just want that you stay in good health keep in good health and it's so wonderful to see you sitting here um, you know uh, I was wondering how you would manage a long evening but I think you come you've come fully ready for that and prepared to be here all evening God bless you God bless you God bless you thank you Mr. Wilfred for those words and one word that again touched our hearts in addition to passion is willingness I think that's lays the secret of the whole thing unless you're willing 
and nothing happens. Uh, Dr. Colin, I think we could experience that willingness to you. And now you will see another project of CMCT for a minute and you will understand what this CMCT is all about in the field of healthcare. Bethany Healthcare Center on the first floor of our CMCT building is 24 by 7 care with 16 beds, a dedicated team of five full-time doctors and 16 part-time specialists. Over 150 patients daily take the services, offering a wide range of services from basic surgeries to complex ones. Medical camps at four different places every week track gynecology, free treatments for the underprivileged and your contributions keep our mission alive, helping those in the margin. You can, why not, are this medical support. Now we have a choreography by Bethany Hostel for Girls, again a passion that Dr. Colin has for uh, children, the hostel, to bring them up. There seems to be a special audience for that program. And you will see, I would use another word for CMCD in the quality of whatever they do for the children and the healthcare and the education. Over to the hostel children for that choreography.
sure all of you enjoyed really that only means building people for building the nation and Dr. Colin thought bring up children and they will lead the nation thank you so much maybe we can give them one more time the big applause that was wonderful <laughs> school then healthcare let's see what else CMCT into even though it was a humble beginning 60 years ago but it's not the same today that's what our God does you will never be the same if God wants to do something let's see what this one minute is all about elderly care the soup kitchen project initiated by CMCT 1995 is an impactful initiative with a primary goal of providing a nutritious hot midday meal every day. It not only serves underprivileged but the neglected elderly individuals operating across six locations including Chennai and its outskirts. The project has extended its benefits to nearly 2,000 and more individuals. Around 160 who are fed almost every day in the noon with a hot meal making a significant difference in their lives. It serves as a shining example of compassion and community empowerment, providing hope, food, and care. Compassion is the heart of God, the passion of people. You can be part of it if you wish to. Contact us anytime. Thank you. Now we have Mr. J.J. Manoharan, the principal of the Madras Christmas College High School, Chetpat. Again, a person who journeys with CMCT for many years has been passionate and he has been open to anything that we could do, even in and through the campus. 
and uh, thank you so much for taking time uh, mr manoharan and as he comes may i request mr ezekiel our director of administration to hand over a memento as a token of our love for your kind support to the ministry of cmc all these years First of all, I want to wish Dr. Colin Reddit on her 85th birthday. Great stalwart sitting in the front. Great people who are here, school students, children from the home, the elderly people. It's a great joy to celebrate someone's birthday for what the God has done in their life. And as I was going through how and the ministry of Dr. Colin has started, when she was 14, she was deeply aware of God's call. She felt I have been stirred to serve India. I was, it really amazed me. At the age of 14, God had put them into a heart to come to a nation called India. That means God is, was concerned about this nation India and her coming had made a huge difference in the life of many people. As this is my 18th year as a principal of this school, I've been in touch with CMCT in many ways. Initially I was in their board and then later due to various commitment I moved out of it. They had the primary school there. Then they moved the death school to Mugape. And I always admired the kind of work went through. And I always heard about Dr. Colin, but never ever I found her to be in the front, but being at the back, pushing people in the front to do great things for the Lord. The projects like child welfare, health care, nutrition support, development project, skill development and training and basically her heart was for the women where in India where women are being marginalized put aside Dr. Colin had a heart for these women and I thank you ma'am for investing in the life of people and we see the fruit of what you have invested in many people as as Unburn and said that there are many people, as Dr. Mr. Wilfred, Jairad, Wilfred Wilfie said, there are many people who have come out of that. Some of the students who left Bethany because you moved came to MCC and some of them have achieved great heights. Coming from a background of family where they feel there is no hope, feeding people who have said there is no one to take care of them, teaching them skills when the husbands leave them and desert them is something wonderful and giving the word of God to them is the greatest mission you have done and I know that God has been blessing you, blessing your organization and thank you for people like Dr. Philip who is heading now as a CEO dynamic people and leaders you have developed it's not easy to run an organization and one thing which I really enjoyed was guided by her motto, where there is no vision, people perish. Where there is no vision, people perish. And Colin Ma'am empowers, it is not that she does it alone, she gives it responsibility so that others would build that great mission that God has given. And I hope uh, God will bless her and she should be, she would be a visionary gimmicking openings to various things that are to come and God will use the whole organization for its extension of kingdom. Thank God for Dr. Collins who has been a person God has called her at the age of 14. 14. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Manohar for those words because you know the journey that you have gone with us.
it was not just education not just health care not elderly but the children development and let's see what the next one minute is all about the child development is coming up Child Development Initiative or CMC aims for the development of a social, emotional, cognitive, physical and communication potential for children from less privileged communities. We have projects like Child Development Project, the other one is Family Child Care Center that has benefited around 400 and more children. At present we have three CDP centers and two family projects family child care projects this is one area that you could as you're watching you can always touch your hands and say we would like to be part of it to see children growing especially the underprivileged children growing into emotional physical and social areas I believe together we can always make a change three centers and two FCC centers covering around 400 children even your smallest contribution towards child development fund can make a huge difference you can now we have brother Matthew Paul Raj from the president assembly He's been journeying with Dr. Colleen for many years. Of course, the family is known to most of us. And we are glad he could make it. And he said, I'll be there to felicitate. And as he comes up, may I request Mr. Aaron, Director of Programs, to hand over a memento as a token of love. I heard that Mr. Matthew is journeying with Dr. Colleen from the beginning. I think we can give him a big hand. Thank you, Matthew, for being with us this evening. Somebody who is journeying from the beginning, you know. The beginning is a beautiful word even from the Bible. <laughs> from the beginning. And I'm sure Mr. Philip and the directors are very happy to have you here this evening. Good evening, and it's good to be here this evening. And what a privilege it is. I've known Auntie Reddit for about... 50 years. The Every Girls Rally in the early 70s, they used to meet on the terrace of our house. And uh, during that time, um, Auntie Reddit and about 15 girls, but those days it was the Every Girls Rally. And they had to tell a verse Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God. Honor the President, 1 Peter 2, 17. Now this was the theme verse, and in order to become uh, every girl's rally, you know, they used to give them a badge. In order to get that badge, they had to tell that verse. Now, me as a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old boy, and my brother Silas, we would be sitting in one corner of the terrace, listening to the singing, listening to this verse, this verse, you know, I heard it there and I learnt it there. And you know, some couple of years later, I was reading the new King James, I mean, sorry, the King James Version, very righteous person, I would only read the King James Version those days. There I read this verse and it said, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. And I said, no, 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 this is a mistake. They have, this is a big mistake they have made, it's honor the president. You know, the things about Auntie Reddit was that she would always make sure that there was nothing alien about her or her work. From very young age that I know her, she used to always wear a sari. And she would drive in a small herald, standard, standard herald car. And that car would always be full of old people. She would take them to church, bring them back. And she was always very active. 
and that was how I got to know Auntie Red. It also she used to play the piano in church and lead the singing in the evening meeting and I would lead the singing and she would be playing the piano. This is how you know the years went on. A few years later I started working and you the time I used to go in the morning, me and my friend Rupert Sundram, we used to go to help out with uh, the computers in their uh, center. And one day, it was raining heavily, I was riding my TVS 50, I went, you know if you remember Kadir Nawaz Khan Road, you'll know that porch that was there and the few steps you had to climb to get in. Those days I wasn't this badly challenged, okay, I could walk on my own, I could ride a two-wheeler and I went. And as I was going in, a postman was leaving the place. He was going out on his cycle. And there I saw Auntie Reddit holding a piece of paper. I, I can't remember what it was, but it was like a stiff paper, a kind of cardboard paper. And she was holding this in her hand. And Rosie was standing there, Rosalind. She was there, I think Gwenny was there, Vimala was there. And as I was going in, I was stopping my bike, Rosie saying, Matthew, one the par, eh? one the par, eh? Yenan, one the par, eh? and all of them are smiling and aunties holding this paper like this. And I went there, what is this? And I looked in, I was surprised, I got a shock. I said, that's a baby. And auntie said, yes, this is a baby. The baby was wet, the baby could hardly cry, so weak, maybe just a few days old. And that, you know what, that postman had just come and given this baby to her and they had just received it. And I asked, where did, where did this baby come from? And auntie said, the postman found this baby near a dustbin outside Kelly's telephone exchange. And he just brought this baby. You know, CMCT has been haven of hope not just for little baby girls but they've, they've been a haven of hope for women I don't know I have seen so many people people wandering in the bus stops people wandering in the station someone would bring them over and leave them there they always found a place for them another incident that comes to mind again this was one of the mornings when I went there and you know, as I go into the Kadar Nawaz Khan Road, they would all be sitting out there and they would be doing their work. That was a working day for them. And as I went in, I would say, Hey everybody! Hello, hello, hello! And wish everybody. And I was a loud mouth. And one day, this, this day when I went there, a little girl came running. If you go to the Kadar Nawaz Khan Road office, and, I mean if you had gone, on the right side there will be auntie's office, auntie Reddit's office. And this little girl came running out from that office and she said, Anna, Anna, Amma Kupuranga. Ooh, was I too noisy? <laughs> Shouting and screaming. Did she hear me? Is she calling me in to probably, you know, chastise me, rebuke me or something? And I said, No, Anna, 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 No, no, Amma Kupuranga, Anna. And I went in. And there was Auntie Reddit and opposite her, Auntie Judith Lane. They were both sitting there. Auntie was smiling, but I, know she, I knew she was emotional. I said, yes, Auntie, good morning. She said, Matthew, did you, I think you know that the landlord in Kadar Nawaz Khan Road has given us notice to vacate. I said, yes, Auntie, I know, because in our assembly, we were praying for them that they should find a place. And you know, she said, Matthew, we, but we have looked, we have seen a place in Chetpat. I said, yes, auntie, I know, they told me. This place is in Chetpat, costs a lot of money. And we've been praying that God would give us this money. And I said, yeah, auntie, I know. And you know what, we were just about to give up. We thought maybe it's not God's will that we should buy this place. And we were just about to give up. And you know what? She said, this is a fax. It just came from some church or organization that has promised to pay the entire amount for that place. Where there is no vision, people perish. That is their motto. But you know something, this lady, she just doesn't have only the vision. 
she also has the faith to back it. <laughs> she has tremendous faith. If you've seen Kadar Nawaz Khan Road and if you see their office today, you'll know that transformation, the work of the Lord needed a bigger place and they got it. Because this lady, she doesn't ask people or rather I would say she asks more on her knees than she asks otherwise. Amazing, isn't it? And she has built a team around her. One more verse that I've always heard her. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Well, she's lived her life that way. And I've learned that from her. And then the fourth incident that I want to say, and I'll be done. You know, I used to go and speak at the staff devotions. And um, we went to the Brethren Assembly for us, both of us, we went to the same assembly in many years. And she came one day, she told me, Matthew, I want you to come and preach at a, a bridge chapel. We meet in MCC school every Sunday morning. Would you be able to come? I said, why not? She said, you know, that service starts at 9 o'clock. I know, Vepri, your service also starts at 9. Gospel Hall. She used to call it Gospel Hall. Gospel Hall, your service also starts at 9. I said, so what, auntie, I'll come. And she said, Daniel, give him a date. And Daniel was opening his diary and then she looked at me and said, Matthew, I want to tell you, this will be different. I was thinking, how different can it be? <laughs> a church is a church, right? I said, no problem, auntie, I'll come, I'll be there. So I went there on Sunday morning and you know the service we started, they're singing old hymns. I know auntie loved these old hymns, so they, are, they sang the old hymns, just like the brethren assembly, no different. Then a few men stood up and they worshipped, just like our brethren assembly. Then one person came and shared the thought for the table before we break bread. You know, we always have the table, the Lord's table. So before that, one person, as usual, would come and share, and he shared, and then he sat down. Then one person prayed for the bread. They broke the bread. Nothing different so far. Everything is the same. And then they came, comes to the cup. And you know, brethren assembly, we people are so, 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 you know, we are strict. We have only that one cup or those two cups. And I knew auntie was from that background anyway. When it came to the cup, they opened a lid and there was small, you know, a tray with small cups in it. And I was thinking, oops, this is different. But anyway, I went, I did my, I did my preaching, I was there to preach, I preached. And after the service was over, I went to auntie to wish her you know and as I was walking up to her she said Matthew are you wondering you know she like still thought of me as that seven-year-old fellow Matthew are you wondering why we had those small cups and I said uh, no auntie it's okay that's that doesn't matter you know I was thinking yes yeah, she's trying to justify herself you know and then but she looked at me no 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 I want you to know I said okay auntie what is it you know, Matthew, in this place, we have lepers, HIV and AIDS patients, we have everybody coming. We don't want anybody to feel left out. They, if they love the Lord and they know the Lord, they are welcome to participate at the table. We don't want to leave. That's why we had this many cups. It was like a slap on my face. Here was me, self-righteous Matthew, you know, thinking that, you know, I'm so righteous. And here she was telling me something. That you just don't love the Lord and love people. Auntie embraced them. So here she was embracing them with God's love. You know, in Galatians 3 it says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, nor Gentile, nor leper, nor HIV AIDS, but all are one in Christ Jesus. And she was teaching that lesson. Auntie, I just want you to know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All these years that you have worked, your labor is never in vain. And you have been a blessing to me. The lessons that I have learned are that you are, as we read in Romans 12, 
you are a living sacrifice you've given your life as a living sacrifice and you are a living witness I praise God for your life auntie and my prayer is that during this year you will have a wonderful and a blessed year ahead God bless you Thank you so much Mr. Matthew speaking from your heart the journey connecting the dots that could give it a big picture what a beautiful background we have starting from Manna Farm for the men camp as boys camp and the terrace for the girls camp you can see the way our God works he works mysterious he is a mysterious God thank you so much a quick one minute the other project after that we will have a very important time of the whole evening's program just watch what it means to work for the women of Chennai city cmc supports two projects the heaven of hope handicraft center and women's empowerment project CMC has impacted more than 1000 plus individuals through this project and out of which 500 or more have worked directly in this project and currently empowering around 275 women through four initiatives at Alapakam, Kodaikanal, Chittur and Chinnakadalur. The Kodaikanal team has about 70 women tailoring certificates courses, Chittur about 25 We have about 116 individuals with eight self-help groups fostering entrepreneurship, connecting hearts to join hands. One of the heartbeat of dear Dr. Colin is women empowerment, and many have taken. And as Mr. Matthew said, Dr. Colin, there is a promise from God. When He blesses someone, He blesses to be a blessing to many, and you are a witness for this great cause women empowerment program and as you're watching i'd like to greet all those who are watching from far and near from distant places our well wishes and all our prayer warriors on behalf of mr philip and the entire team we would like to greet you and i'm sure you're all enjoying this evening as you're watching this program in any program there is a time that you and i prepare ourselves with all this background just to listen to what God has to speak to us on our 85th birthday and as we settle down may I request Mr. Philip CEO of CMCT to introduce and welcome our chief guest for this evening who will bring us the word of God over to Mr. Philip good evening everybody it's my privilege to introduce the chief guest for this evening function, Dr. Paul Dinagaran. He is the chairman of Jesus Calls and the chancellor of Karunia University. During my childhood, my mother used to listen to the message of Uncle DGS Dinagaran, who was a great servant of God who impacted thousands of lives in India. Dr. Paul is the beloved son of late uncle DGS Dinakaran and Andy Stilla Dinakaran and he carried forward the great vision of uh, our great uh, servant of God late uh, uncle DGS Dinakaran. Dr. Paul is a worldwide speaker and it's a privilege to have him today. We welcome Dr. Paul to this function on behalf of CMCT family and request to kindly deliver the chief guest address this evening. As he comes, may I request Mr. Philip to hand over a memento as a token of our love and affection for Dr. Paul Denekaran for making it possible to be with us this evening. Let's put our hands together and say thank you, Lord, for the ministry of Dr. Paul Denekaran.
It's a great joy for me to wish Dr. Colin Reddit a happy 85th birthday. Today, this year, my mother is also celebrating her 85th birthday, 2024. So, I should call you mother, Colin Reddit. <clears throat> you have been a mother to many. You have been a mother to those in the faith and those who are serving God. This morning I got a post from someone in the United States and it was about a lady who is the longest living American today and she is 116. So I said this is a coincidence but today she is hosting a great wild birthday party in the United States. But here, Dr. Colin read it, Dear Mother is hosting a missionary party to build God's kingdom. What a great joy it is for us to join together in this great mission, dedicating ourselves to fulfill the will of the Master. She is the daughter of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And you have proved it right through your service all these 85 years. Not even one moment has passed by without establishing your father's kingdom. And how pleased he should be celebrating with you because he is the life giver. And we rejoice over your love for Jesus. Even this evening, I'm so grateful to our dear brother, Mr. Mani Manchul Philip, for inviting me to be part of this great, great celebration with where heaven is also part of and millions of people who have been blessed, multiplied through the services that you have offered are also rejoicing today. As we look at the life of Mother, call it Reddit, we can say only one thing, quoting Colossians 1.27, Christ in me, the hope of glory. We all said she has been the hope of people, the women, the children, people who are hungry, people who are forsaken, but it is Christ in her, the hope of glory. So, we celebrate Christ in her. When my father passed away in 2008, I had to stand before few lakhs of people in the city of Nagpur to preach the gospel. The whole ground was full of people. I was surprised to have that in Nagpur. And when they announced my name and I stood up to go to the podium, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, Paul, this is not your platform. You are not standing on your platform. You are standing on the platform of the martyrs who have shed their blood, who have poured their tears, who have opened their hearts and cried out to me for the salvation of the people of this city and this country. Many of them saw their own children massacred, their own wives outraged, the modesty of their wives outraged. Some of them never saw even one soul saved. It is their blood, it is their tears, it is their prayers on which you are standing to preach the gospel. All these people have come because of their sacrifice. And when I made the whole crowd stand up with all the police cameras in front of me and I said, the blood of Jesus Christ, the greatest martyr has been shed for you to be saved. And the blood of hundreds of martyrs have been shed in this land for you to receive 
the life-giving power of Jesus. So shall we all praise the Lord. Seventy percent of them never knew Christ. But the Spirit of God came and the doors opened for the whole of North India. And today I do that in every meeting. It is true. Mother, you are one such martyr. You have sacrificed your whole life, your youthhood, your livelihood, your life itself to bring Jesus to thousands and thousands and thousands. And we are sure there are going to be so many, already it has been so, it will be so, to see the multiplication of the souls through your martyrdom, living sacrifice for the sake of Christ. So we honor you, we salute you, and God rejoices over you for being just like Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And in Galatians 5.24, The scripture says, those who belong to Christ have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. Mother has had no passion, no desire for herself. She has crucified her passions and desires and her flesh to the cross to be belonging to Christ all through her life. In Revelation 22, 11 and 12, the scripture says, the Lord says in the last chapter of the New Testament, he that is unrighteous, let him become more unrighteous. He that is holy, let him become more holy. But he that is Uh, righteous, let him become more righteous. Let the world which is full of filth, which is full of unrighteousness, become more filthy, become more unrighteous. But God chooses a few to be more holy, to be more righteous, so that his righteousness and holiness will flow out of them and reach the world. It's not preaching, but it's living holy. Producing holiness through one's life. Producing righteousness through one's life. Which brings Jesus to the people. And the Lord says, I'm coming quickly. And I will give the reward for everyone who produces holiness. Who produces righteousness. And mother has done it all her life. She has produced holiness. Produced righteousness. And that's why it has flown to thousands of people. In a, in a church in this city, there was a time of prayer. They called it a tarry meeting for them to have the presence of Christ more, the Spirit of God coming upon them. And there was a man who was praying along with the group. And he never felt the presence of God. He could not pray. He could never feel the anointing rising up within him, the connection with Jesus. And suddenly, the one who was leading the prayer said, if any of you has not got right with your brothers, with your sisters, if there is something lacking in your relationship, go and set it right, or set it right in your heart. Immediately this man got up and ran outside, and he came back after a few minutes, and after that, when he began to pray, you could see the glory of God upon him. And he was a different man, full of God's presence. And they asked him, where did you go? And he said, I had a broken relationship with my sister. So even though she wronged me, I went and asked forgiveness, just like Jesus. And we reconciled. And I came quickly running back. And now I am connected with Jesus. The Spirit of God has risen up within me. Follow peace with all men. 
holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You have followed peace with God, followed peace with all men, all men. And that's why you have seen the Lord and you have been crucified with Christ, carrying him all through your life. And secondly, Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I, but Christ living in me. The life of Christ flowing through me. This happened in the life of Mother Teresa. One day a young girl came to her and said, Mother, I have holidays now. I want to serve the people with you. Would you give me some work? She was a rich girl. And mother said, daughter, take that bucket, take the medicine, take the bandages and go and wash that leper who has been just brought here. And she went running with everything, delighted to wash the leper and put the bandage. But then the girl came running back after a few seconds and said, mother, I can't do it. I can't do it. He's stinking. He's terrible to look at. I can't do it. Give me some of the work. Mother took the bandage, the ointments and the water and went and with a smile and joy and love cleansed him, bandaged him and put a smile in his face. And the girl asked, how could you do it mother? How could you do it? Mother said, daughter, when I tend the wounds of this leper, I feel that I am tending the wounds of my master. On the cross he died with no one to care for his wounds. Even when he was buried, it was preparation day, they could not tend his wounds. But today, as I touch the leper, as I touch the wounds of the sick, I feel I'm touching the wounds of my master, my Lord Jesus. And I do it with love. And that's why healing flows out of me. I'm crucified with Christ. And that brings life to all people. And that has been your life too. Healing has flowed because you have anointed the people as if you have anointed the wounds of Jesus. And how much healing in the soul, mind and bodies of the people have been seen in the days past. Thank you, Jesus. And finally, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 4. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power. I never preached empty words, persuasive words, but my words went to you, says Paul the Apostle, with the power of the Spirit. Power of the Spirit. As we all know about David Brainerd, a great missionary to the Red Indians. Once he was going to a village, the Red Indian village, to preach the gospel. And as he was walking towards the village, the sentry was waiting at the top of the gate with a poisonous arrow. And he said, this man is different. He's not one amongst us, so I have to kill him. And he was waiting for him to come on range, in range. And just before that, miraculously, David Brainerd put his tent and he raised his hands towards heaven and began to pray. Pray for that village. Pray for the salvation of those people. And the sentry saw a poisonous snake coming straight to that tent. And he said, I don't need to waste my arrow anymore. The snake will kill him. But the snake passed through the tent and came out on the other side and David Brainerd came out all alive. He took the tent, 
and walked towards the village. The same sentry came down and he shouted, God is coming to us. God is coming to us. God is coming to us. And that village received Jesus. The message of the Lord went with the power of the Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit through signs, wonders and miracles. That's the power of the gospel. One side good works, on the other side the message of God's power going to the people through persistent prayer. Persistent emptying before the Lord and carrying Jesus and his word, the right word in right season to the right people. And that is what we have seen bringing about life to thousands and thousands. And we celebrate this this evening and we thank God for carrying this grace of God in your life all these years. And we pray that you have, as you have sown yourself in this land, our land of India, being grateful, we pray that we will all see multiple results with millions of souls saved, dedicating each one of our lives to this mission. It's nice to appreciate what mother has done, but this is the time for us to submit to God's will, to take this mission of God's love through signs, wonders and miracles, through the word of God and through good works and healing of the broken hearted people and bring them to Jesus. This is our life and I pray we in Chennai will multiply and multiply millions into the kingdom of God. Let's surrender ourselves to this mission and may God give us grace. Shall we thank God for this great life of mother and the continuing life where she will birth thousands in thousands to do the will of God. I need not ask what time will bring While to my Savior's hand I cling A song of trust my soul can sing For step by step He will lead me I need not fear, though dark the way, for Jesus close to me that stay, until the dawn of perfect day, still step by step he will lead me. Loving Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to you for 85 years of dear mother walking with you, talking with you, carrying you and bringing you to thousands and thousands, Lord. We are grateful. Even now, we pray that you will continue to lead her, continue to give her all the joys to see the fruits of all her labor in multiplied terms in the days to come. Let her see many, many, many rising up just like herself to bring the power of the gospel to millions in our nation. Father, we surrender ourselves to this mission to care for everyone and to bring them to the knowledge of salvation. We surrender ourselves to this mission. We thank you because you are with us. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, beloved brother Dr. Paul, for those words from the word which has brought us the power, strengthening our souls and hearts and minds one more time. Now we have quickly a collage 
of uh, felicitations from across the friends and near and dear ones for a couple of minutes. Uh, let's see what it is. You are very happy birthday. Hope you have a lovely day. Thank you. Kathy joins me in sending our warmest greetings to you, Colleen, on this special day. Kathy joined me when you were celebrating your 70th. I came to India for your 75th and for your 80th. But unfortunately, for your 85th, we have to send our greetings from Scotland via video. It's been a great privilege and honour for us to know you and to have you as a friend over all these 20 years that we've been serving with CMCT. And so on this occasion, we send you our love and our best greetings for your 85th birthday. And we trust all the staff will join in the celebrations. <laughs> And I send my warmest greetings and bundles of love to you and also in achieving such a wonderful record of dedication to the work of CMCT. Now I also want to send my greetings to all of you there today who are celebrating this joyous occasion. Happy birthday! And we want to thank you, Colin, for having such a wonderful life. <laughs> Congratulations on reaching 85 years. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Colleen. Happy birthday to you. It brings me immense joy to wish you a happy 85th birthday. Also, I want to congratulate you on 60 remarkable years of Christian service in India. Hi, Colleen. I'm also sending birthday greetings for your 85th, along with a praise to the Lord for your 60 years serving Jesus Christ in India. Hello, Colleen. Just want to wish you a very happy birthday. Have a great time and happy birthday, and I, I love you. Congratulations on reaching the milestone of 85. It's a great achievement and um, you should be proud of all the work that you have done. From those of us at Global Connections, I want to wish you a happy birthday and express our gratitude for all that you have done as you celebrate 60 years of ministry in India. God bless, to God be the glory. It gives me great joy to celebrate with Dr. Colin Reddit, her 85th birthday, my family joins with me in wishing her good health and every blessing all the days of her life. Dear Colleen, greetings from New Zealand. Happy birthday, 85 years, what a wonderful achievement. And 60 years of service there in Chennai, serving the poor. Take care, and greetings to everyone there from New Zealand. Isn't that wonderful that we have people around the globe 
connecting hearts and minds to Dr. Colin Wishing. And I'm sure even those who are watching, those who are part of this, you will say thank you Lord for the life of Dr. Colin, touching lives and blessing people. It's a great. And now is the time to listen to the response. We heard and we spoke so much. Let's see what Dr. Colin has to speak to us. Over to Dr. Colin for a response for all that God has done all these years. Good evening, everybody. I'd just like to praise God and thank you people for coming today. I just give all the praise and glory uh, to the Lord for, uh, for the way he put his hand on me and called me to India. I will never forget the day I left in New Zealand and came on a ship in those days uh, to Colombo and then to, by train to India. And uh, I, I never, never dreamt that the Lord would put his hand on me and uh, lead me to do a work for him. But my heart was always to serve the Lord and to reach out to the poorest of the poor. And uh, the Lord has put his hand on that and I praise God tonight for the many people who are knowing about the Lord today and who are uplifted in their lives. And I would just ask you to continue to pray for me. I need his hand on me to continue to give me good health and strength that I would be available to do whatever the Lord has for me in the next years of my life. And I just pray God's richest blessing on all of you and ask you to th and thank you uh, for coming tonight and thank you everybody for, may, and may God bless you abundantly. That is my prayer for you all. God bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Colin. As uh, Dr. Paul called you as mother, She's popularly called as Amma for everybody. She's popularly known and I'm sure. Thank you for the response. We could see your heartbeat still continues for the well-being of the people around. May I request where Amma considers the eldest daughter, Sister Vimalaka, to give a flower bouquet to dear Amma? That's on behalf of the CMCT family. And also Sister Rosalind, who joined from the day one of handicrafts, still continues to be part of our staff team to hand over a memento to Dr. Colin. <laughs> Rosalind, who is giving us uh, one who joined with Dr. Colin from day one, all these 60 plus years, in that garage in a small place. Thank you so much. Now, having heard this, CMCT, the leadership felt that's the way of journey thus far, but for the future, we have a way forward. And maybe you can think about what it could be. Let's look into a watch a video, Way Forward, what it in store for the next few years. That is called 2030 Vision of CMCT.
I want you to carry this vision from today. On behalf of CMCT family, we declare this vision on our 85th birthday, God willing. On our 90th birthday, we'll see the project on the screen. Because God is God of impossible things. Can we put a big hand and say, Lord, we could see that. And we would like you to join with us. Maybe someone sitting here feel, I can do something for that vision. Most welcome. Not necessary, we receive funds all the time. We do have funds. I believe when the vision is there, funds follows, resources follows. Because our source of resource is from God. And I'm sure Dr. Colin will be the first person to say, thank you, Lord, when 50 bedded hospital that we see in the days to come. Almost we have come to the close. And may I request Mr. Ezekiel, Director of Administration, to propose a word of thanks, followed by the closing prayer by our Vicar Reverend Naini Chandi Vizier. Over to Mr. Ezekiel, the Director of Administration of CMCT, to bring a word of thanks. On behalf of Dr. Colin, management and all the staff of Christian Missions Charitable Trust, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to our chief guest, Dr. Paul Dinagaran, who has kindly accepted and taken time to attend in the midst of his busy schedule. I also thank all the distinguished guests, Reverend James Raj, Dr. Pratap Philip, Mr. Wilfred Devidar, Mr. Manoharan, Mr. Matthew Paul Raj, and Reverend Nino Chandi for partaking in this celebration of Thanksgiving. I also thank all the staff of CMCT, friends, well-wishers, the authorities of this auditorium, police, securities, housekeeping, and all those who have worked hard behind the screen. Thank you so much for coming. God bless. May I request Vika Reverend Naini Chandi, the Jerusalem Syrian Mahatma Church, Ananagar, to bring this program to a close with a word of prayer and benediction. As he comes on the stage, may I request Mr. Aaron to hand over a memento to our Reverend Naini Chandi as a token of love and affection for taking your time to be with us this evening. Try on God in whom we live, we move, and have our being. We thank you and praise you for the wonderful life and witness of our dear mother, Dr. Colin. We thank you so much for bringing her to India to work among the poor, glorifying your name. We thank you for giving us this wonderful opportunity to give thanks to you for her life for the past 85 years. You have been good to her and guided her with your spirit. Lord, we thank you for giving her the willingness to work among the poor. We thank you for her commitment and the passion for you, building people for you, giving compassion around her. Lord, we thank you for her life. As she step into one more year, we beseech your guidance and blessings upon her. Lord, we pray that you may enlarge her vision for the coming years. Lord, we pray that you may give her strength and wisdom to guide all the projects that is going to come in the future as well. Lord, we also at this time pray for CMCT, for all those who are working in that institution. We pray that you may fill them with your spirit so that they may be able to discharge their duties with full commitment and full vigor. Lord, we thank you for the blessed time that you've given to us this evening. For the main speaker, Dr. Paul, and for the message that 
you have bring through him lord bless his ministry abundantly and for all the dignitaries that you have brought here this evening bless their ministries as well lord we once again commit ourselves into your loving hands lord we pray that you may give us wisdom and commitment so that we may be able to discharge your work for the kingdom of god enlarging our own vision for the glory of god lord as we depart may your continuous presence be with us and guide us in jesus name we pray amen may the blessings of the triune god the father son and holy spirit rest and abide with us especially with dr collins this day and evermore amen <laughs>